Let's say you've got a wave that's traveling through space. A traveling wave can be represented like this, where if I take a particular location on a rope, say, as the wave goes by it, that location is going up and down and up and down as a function of time. I could also represent it like this. This would be like a photograph because it's a graph of y versus x. So I'm taking a particular instant in time and seeing that some points of the rope is, are up and other points of the rope are down and other points are up and down. And so we could talk about this distance right here. It's a distance because it's over x. This distance over here is the wavelength. And we could talk about this up here <clears throat> between here and here, that seems to be a time because this is a graph of time and that's the period. And of course we know that frequency is one over period. And frequency and wavelength are related in such a way that they tell you how fast the wave is going. And that's really cool. As we get into light, we're gonna wanna think about that one more time. I frankly never remember how speed is related to frequency and wavelength, but I remember the units of frequency are one over seconds and I know the units of wavelength are meters, and I know, of course, the units of speed are, whoa, meters per second. So I've multiplied those two together, then I'm gonna say that speed is frequency times wavelength. And this holds true for the speed of light as well. So we can get ourselves a nice blue and say that the speed of light is the frequency of light times the wavelength of light. So you can hear light described as a certain frequency, usually be in megahertz, gigahertz, something like that. And um, you can also hear the speed of light described, or so you can hear light described by its wavelength. And <clears throat> higher energy light means higher frequency, which in turn means in turn means lower wavelength because the speed of light is a constant. If frequency goes up, then wavelength goes down. So these graphs are like you stretch one, the other one shrinks up. You stretch the other one, the uh, the first one shrinks up. So this is a very powerful relationship and you can get it from dimensional analysis whenever you need it. That's it. Just kidding, that's not it. I also want to say that frequency is detor determined by the source of the wave and the speed of the wave, we said in a general sense, the speed of the wave is determined by the medium of the wave. And this sucker right here, lambda, is determined by the speed of the wave divided by the frequency. So it's just a division problem to try to figure out what the wavelength is. It's like you get the speed right and you get the frequency right from the source and the wavelength is just a result of those things. So I like to think of frequency as a more fundamental character of a wave than I do of wavelength. So I'm the kind of guy who would describe a wave by its frequency rather than its wavelength. But I, I agree it's equally valid to describe for light waves, to describe a light wave by its wavelength because they are related by C, which is a constant for regardless of what you're doing. And I guess we need to say that we're talking about C when we say that C is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second, that's in a vacuum. So the medium is nothing at all. And we'll talk about that and all the effects that that has later on. Mickelson and Morley investigated that. And uh, that was in the late 1800s and came to some startling results about the medium for light waves.